Holy moly. <laughs> Did y'all like that? <laughs> oh my gosh. What a, uh, what a mistake. Holy moly, you talk about messing something up right here. Don't do that. Uh, what a day. Um, such a fast Napa Camaro Z01. And, and honestly, that was the only reason we were able to, to get back in it. I, I pretty well blew it and uh, got the cautions at the right time and, and brought it home. Thank you, guys. Y'all made a hell of a lot of noise right there. Well, normally on this show, we talk about the turning point in the race and how it affected the race winner. We've kind of documented Chase Elliott's day, other than the big mistake that he referenced. Uh, he had the best car, and he proved it with the best drive. But, guys, the battle for the points and this bubble line, I really think that was the turning point of the day. And stage one, pretty straightforward. Stage two, kind of straightforward. A couple guys score points, a couple guys don't. But then we head into the final stage, and look at this. William Byron's feeling pretty good. Blaney feeling pretty good. Almirola, Boyer, Alex Bowman has work to make up. But instantly, it goes away for the driver of the 12, Ryan Blaney. He was fortunate enough to move through, but, Jeff, that final stage was anything but straightforward. Yeah, right here. It had a problem, mechanical problem, a rear brace that, that braces the rear trainer arm, and the rear end housing hooks them together, so to speak. It broke off. And the problem with that is, What's going to happen next? Yeah. What's the next thing he's going to break? So they did a nice job giving up some track position, but then they caught caution, right? Uh, but they got in here and got that fixed. And then, DJ, I love this call. Not only do the mechanics fix it, yeah. Jeremy Bullens keep everybody calm, but then he looks at what's in front of him, and he says, this isn't going to work. We're not going to pass these guys. You, The only way I know how to make up time, gas only at lap 78. Big gamble putting it back in the driver's hands. Well, as a driver, I like the idea you're going to put it in my hands. Would I love four tires? Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to make my job a lot easier. But put me in the position where I have to do it. And this was the most difficult circumstances. I would go back and say that watching Ryan Blaney throughout the day, I wasn't shocked that something broke on that car because <laughs> he was using up those curves, and that car looked like the right side of it was in the air more than it was on the ground at times. But they fixed it. They did a masterful job with that. And then he showed what he's made of, too. I talked about Alex Bowman showing me something. Ryan Blaney showed me something, too, because that's a difficult situation. If it wouldn't have been any cautions to have restart after restart with those tires, then that was another thing, you know, where you're kind of spread out. But you're in with people that have fresher tires, and you have to get the job done. Great drive by Ryan Blaney. Well, that great drive was a segment ago. We talked about the 10 and who he was racing. This is what made it so difficult, because he had the 12 eliminated, and here comes the 12 back yeah. up into the mix. And I think that changed it a little bit. Another driver who I thought, we don't have a lot of highlights, which is a great thing, is the driver of the 24, <laughs> William Byron. The pole sitter was the highlight. He started up front, led the field to green, relatively dominated the first stage. He did get beat on that late restart yeah. by Kyle Larson, but scored a good amount of points right there. William Byron, I, I don't really think, made a misstep all day long, did he? I mean, it was as straightforward as it could be for the young 21-year-old. Had the drive he needed. That's yeah. the key, right? What's the goal? What do we need to make happen? And then go make it happen. Yeah. And I, I, you know, a win's not always in victory lane. Yeah. And, you know, that was that's what Sunday was about for this team. Yeah, this is a, a young man. Right? Chad Knauss is doing an excellent job with him. You know, you can say a lot of things. Uh, about Chad and the way he goes about things, but he has taken this year and this driver, and he's given him good race cars, and he's called really, really good races uh, for him to put him to keep him out of certain situations and put him in good situations to make the driver feel good. To know when you've got a fast car, I'm going to let you go out there and lead laps on these difficult places, and he's proven to be up to the task. And before these playoffs started we discussed what was important for each driver. And, and I don't have William Byron as a championship contender. That's not a knock on him. I just don't think he can keep up. Now, he might could prove us all wrong. But the most important thing is, while he's not a rookie in the series, he is a rookie in the playoffs. And we talked about how important it is to get experience. Well, now he's bought a whole nother round. Now he's bought a cut race that he advanced. So now he gets yeah. the pressure of Dover, the pressure of Talladega, the pressure of Kansas, the pressure of racing against the best. I mean, look who he's going to line up with. The four we eliminated, all very good race teams, but I don't think we had a shocker in those four. When you look at the top of the playoff leaderboard, those are still the ones he's going to have to race for a championship, if not this year, at some point in his career. So I think that move by the 24 of advancing is going to be very valuable as his career moves on. A guy whose career has moved on, and he's looking for that championship, the 14 of Clint Boyer. I won't lie, he's a good road course racer. 
I was worried about Clint Boyer. I just didn't know if, if the moment, if the emotion, if him and his crew chief could agree. I had all these concerns. They proved me wrong. Yeah, Solid Clint, day. Clint Boyer had a clean day. Clint Boyer had the kind of day that I, you're more accustomed to seeing Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer is, in my eyes, he is the guy that's going to finish fifth, fourth, third, sixth, seventh. He's not a guy that's going to win 60 races in his career. He's going to consistent you to death. Yep. And he hasn't been that guy lately. He just hasn't. And he's made some mistakes. Uh, that team hadn't been at their best. But over the last two weeks, not just yesterday, but over the last two weeks, they got it together. They got consistency back. They took mistakes away. And I think that goes a long way for what this team needs to do. That's their strength, right? If they try to get out of that, it's not going to work for them. Now, the question is, moving forward, because they are so far behind in points, can consistency do it to get them to the next round? I think it can because we have Talladega coming up. Yeah. If you can leave this round with consistency, I think you can move forward. Yeah. Here is what I believe has become the most important day for Clint Boyer, and especially Clint Boyer, is when they can unload with a good race car. So that first day, that first time on the track, they've had speed the last few weeks. That puts Clint Boyer in a whole different mindset as a driver, trying to go from – the point of not having something so good and trying to adjust that and make their car better is where they seem to really struggle. And when they don't have that speed, then they really get themselves in a lot of trouble. And I, and I think, too, I, I, we've yet to hear what his plans are for next year. Yeah. And the, the making these playoffs mattered. Advancing to the next round matters. Now, if he could advance to the next round again, that would be huge because, I mean, you can you, you can do it everything you want as a car owner. You own it. But how do you take a driver that's made the playoffs, went through the first round, went through the second round, how do you make a change there? I yeah. think that would be very, very difficult to do. Yeah. You said a mindset. I talked with Clint Boyer past, after Las Vegas. He was not in the, the right mindset for all, good reasons. Didn't run well. Every question, every interview I heard leading into the Roval, when it was easy to say what was wrong, when it was easy to say how bad the Roval was going to be, it was not. He was couldn't wait to get there, fired up, proud of his team. He kind of became the leader of the team leading into the Roval, and then him and his crew chief put it together in the race. So, uh, like you said, they're at a deficit, but I don't know if I'd gamble again. I mean, you could Talladega. Craziness of oh, Talladega, craziness of Clint Boyer. That goes hand in hand, doesn't that's what, it? That's what made yesterday even more pressure-packed and so important in getting to the next round because every one of these 12 drivers knows that next week at Talladega, you know, get, get what you can at Dover, but every one of them know they can win at Talladega, and that gets you to the next round. And I, when I think of Dover, I think Clint being really good at Dover. Yeah. I think he's yeah. a guy that's very good at Dover. He's going to get on that yellow line and eat that thing up. You know what I mean? He's just going to wrap the bottom. And I think, I think you'll see that 14 run well.